Okay, well, welcome back. This is Wolves re-reviewed uh, with uh, the Athletics' Tim Spears. What? And uh, Mikey Burrows from Wolves TV. Hello. And me, Tom Parry. Um, we are... This is the second half of the season. Wolves currently in 10th on 37 points. And uh, Dave doesn't look too happy. I think he's been confident all the way through. He knows what's happening here. This, this oh, of could course. Be the end of the season. This is just worth. In fact, this is this was at the end of the season when he was actually being filmed. He just never looked that happy. Yeah, that's true. Actually, not the most cheerful of blokes. Nice guy, though. I always thought. Do you have you guys met him? You interviewed him. Not yeah. the most cheerful of blokes. <laughs> Dave, we're so sorry if you're watching. <laughs> Off to a flyer on part two. <laughs> um, have you spent time with him? I've spent Dave. a little bit of time with him. Me and Tim were at an event at the Mount, I think, a while back. I hosted a charity thing with him, Colin Cameron and Paul Butler that Tim came to. Um, and he, he he seems pretty decent and stuff. I mean, he Paul, comes across, yeah. he Paul comes Butler, across host, really nice Paul boy. Butler like, saved that whole night, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but the, the point to tally was disappointing for us because we felt that um, we deserved more, but we didn't get it. I think sometimes when you go through... He's so, he does speak like a man who's got the world weight of the world on his shoulders. He's like a, a deep thinker, um, yeah. but very, very intelligent bloke. Really good man manager from what all the players say. Yeah, I really like, I really liked him as a manager. Good. Uh, he comes across as a good man. But Just yeah. kind of like no, like no nonsense, but but not not in a not in the very obvious way that Mick McCarthy was. But he's still still <laughs> built from that similar kind of mould. I think. I think he let the dressing room do what it needed to do because it had obviously some really strong characters in it. Ince, I guess even Irwin for his experience, Butler, obviously, but even some of those younger guys like they're not kind of people who would shy away from getting involved in stuff. Yeah, and also you've got to say the pressure on that man after all that money they'd spent the season before and what had happened, and then you've got Sijak, and as we were saying towards the end of the last one, you know, he's very outspoken comments about demanding promotion. So to deliver on that, you know, yeah, what we're going to see now is like huge credit to him. Spoiler alert, guys, we get promoted. Oh, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Mikey, did you get that um, video I sent to you of a hippo eating a watermelon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's that's what we've done, everybody, in between uh, recording part one and part two. It's amazing, isn't it? Just in, in, one, in one mouth, all it's just gone. That was the equivalent of the Christmas period. Uh, <laughs> it's like the winter break of this season review. <laughs> yeah, I thought, uh, I thought someone had turned my uh, Wi-Fi camera back onto my phone face for a moment. <laughs> Oh, comedy of errors. Oh. Always a great commentary <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah, in fact, next time we do this, we should have a like a, 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 a box to tick every time we hear a commentary cliche. It's bingo. Yeah, 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 that's it. That's what we should play. That's Lee Grant, by the way. No. Isn't he like at Man United now or something? I was wondering who that was. Yeah, I think you're right. As if he's still around. <sighs> oh, bang. What a goal. Okay. Stay hit. Smash. I know we mentioned this a little bit in the first part, but it is weird looking back on the old North Bank and just how far away it was. The whole the whole ground, like the South Bank as well, obviously the, the Steve Ball, which has perennially been half a mile from the pitch. But yeah, it's weird. But didn't they, 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 used, they used to drive cars around at half times, remember? They could they could yeah. cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I don't why don't I remember like this is like the whole Dave Edwards minder theme tune thing. This completely passed me by. <laughs> oh, what a game this is, by the way. The atmosphere this night was incredible. Kennedy will just really have piled on the pressure in these opening few moments. A half clearance. Cameron. Playing it back to uh, Butler who gets it in and Dart got enough pressure on to win the corner. I feel like, like even because even through the 90s and stuff, it was always like those kind of big FA Cup games. That's a great Amazing. hit. Brilliant. Those big FA Cup games is when like everything came alive. Yeah, like, well, Sir Jack always used to say, 
he wanted to win the FA Cup even more than winning the Premier League. Like it was, it was a the ultimate for him was to see Wolves lift the FA Cup, and you know they, they came pretty close on a few occasions. They had they had a great record in the nineties. Got to a couple of quarters, got to a final, uh, semi final. Sorry, semi at Villa Park, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this you've got to remember the context of this game, just how good Newcastle were at the time under Bobby Robson. You've got Shearer and Bellamy up front. They were, um, yeah. they were always in and around the top kind of four or five at this point. So, one of my memories of this night, I was in the Steve Bullupper. Look at that throw. And I'd put a quid on... Oh, here we go. Oh, what a goal. Oh, back to front. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd put a quid on the correct score and win 80 quid from a one pound bet. <laughs> it's one of those, one of, those, one of the best nights of my life. This one, <laughs> that's one of those really weird ones because if you'd gone in and gone, Yeah, I reckon it's gonna be 3 2, everyone yeah. must have been going, What are you talking about? Yeah, I know that's it. It's like that, that's how I, you know. Uh, if I gamble, then it's like I'm putting a quid on and I'm choosing something with ridiculous odds, <laughs> and that's why I done it. It was like it's one of the only times in my life it's ever come off. Because like this, this came from nowhere. Like people who watched yeah. part one towards the end was on a horrendous run. They're mid table in the championship. Newcastle, one of the best teams in the country. Like this, literally just came from nowhere. This this performance. Yeah, because so Jack had basically read the riot act to yeah, Dave Jack Jones. Jones. In one of the kind of worst, like that kind of dreaded vote of confidence that you never hear anymore. No, it's very true. Well, so Jack used to say it every week. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't win this week, you're sacked. <laughs> Was that your Sir Jack impression? No, it wasn't. It really, really wasn't. It really was. <laughs> oh, oh, amazing, Jolian. Amazing from Jolian. I still think like Jolian doesn't quite like Jolian and Lee Naylor. They still there, though, didn't they? Slicing through the keeper's <laughs> legs. I still don't think yeah. like people recognise just how kind of good they were and the fact that they came through. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this was Lescott pre his serious injury. The start on, the start of the next season. He was. I, I, honestly, one of the best centiles I've ever seen at Molyneux this season. Yeah, this season before. I, I, I think of um, I think of Lescott and Dean Richards. Like yeah. uh, watching Lescott come through reminded me of Dean Richards. I thought I remember watching Dean Richards just thinking, "What a player!" Completely and, agree. Uh, they just they both made it look so easy. They look different class, you know, different class. But you know the thing with yeah. Jolian, it's like. It's it's not like he kind of had like a year where he kind of was in a bit and out. It's like he just went straight in and that, that was it. Yeah, same with Lee Naylor. They were like 17, 18 when they came to the team. I've got yeah. to just point out that what the highlights didn't show there was Craig Bellamy pointing to his Premier League badge as he walked off the pitch at you. Yeah, the worst man in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh hello. It's a goal in, is it? It is now. What a goal. Uh, hang on. Let's just wait for the comedy of errors comment. Is it going <laughs> to... Walker, the ball under his foot. I don't think it had gone in by that. Oh. Yes, George. <laughs> was that Adam Proudlock, by the way? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. What happened to Proudlock? Where did he go on to? Oh, was it Telf Telford United, was it? It was in was the league for a while. Cur currently turning out for Wolves All-Stars. My mate used to think Proudlock was going to be like the same as Steve Ball. That's what, oh, because he had the unfortunate timing of coming in just after Bully had retired and literally every striker that played for Wolves, including Cedric Roussel and Havard Flo, would, would, would have done the next Steve Ball. <laughs> the next Bully, yeah. <laughs> Co Colin Larkin as well. I think I think even he got the next, the next Steve Ball mantle. <laughs> Colin Larkin got sold this season for actual money, you know. Did he? Who to? Mansfield. Oh, he was the only person that left for any money this season. Was the only money that they bought in was from Colin Larkin. Time to bring it down. And Dars Cross. Wimbledon living on a, a knife edge. Oh, the living moment. on a knife edge. There's another. Yeah. Mark Kennedy. He's done him. Oh. 
Beautiful goal. Eventually take the lead through Kenny Miller. Come on, Ken. Same pressure right on the stroke of our time. Miller's looping header over Kelvin Davis. It's amazing to think that Kenny Miller's only just retired. Yeah, what a career. Say, man, I've got a theory. I reckon they were doing some kind of weird scientific experiments at this period. <laughs> what, with, with the ageing process? Well, like, none of the old players look any different. <laughs> and there are players who are young that are only... Like you say, Kenny Miller's only just stopped playing. Right-footed effort into the box. There's plenty in there, and Butler has scored... Oh, I can't believe Butler claims that. Nah. How big the shorts are as well in this period. Oh, this is another great game. Brilliant. And Molyneux was to witness another showpiece occasion. I think I think Le Leicester were Leicester were in the same division, weren't they? Have we played Leicester yet? Yeah, I think they're Yeah, they are, yeah. They're in the I think they got promoted that year. I was yeah, say, I, from I, that year, in my head, I think they did, yeah. That's right. The 4 3 the year after. Get in there, Wolfie. Incredible goal. He's unplayable. I'd, I'd forgotten how good he was. Watching this reminds you, really. It was just injuries. That, that's, that's the only thing that held him back. It's one of those players, isn't it? Yeah, they lost, to, they lost away at Leicester early in the season. We've had some great games against Leicester over the years, haven't we? Well, like... Yeah, the four threes. Yeah, I mean, the four threes... Like, I, I genuinely, I don't remember any of us. Oh, yeah, OK, maybe, maybe that's all I'm thinking about. <laughs> maybe what I mean is we've had a couple of four threes against Leicester. <laughs> <laughs> we've had two great games against them. Oh, we, had, we beat them in the FA Cup, didn't we? The pen, was it penalties? Was that, I think, on Sheffield Wednesday? Yeah, no, 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 I think they did. No, no didn't no, they, they lose? No, they lost to them at the Carabao Cup last season. It was nil-nil. <laughs> yeah, that's not the one we're thinking of. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking like... Uh, yeah, 94, 95, wasn't it? Where, like... There was a what? There was yeah, the like one nil David Kelly the, and... Yeah, David Kelly got like, goal of the month, I think. Usual suspects in the box. David Kelly and Don Goodman. Oh, George and Dar. Yes. Is so is Colton Cole still on loan? Have we still got Colton Cole here. He must have gone back if Proudlock was playing in the other game. Shrouded in mystery, that Colton Cole loan spell still still can't. <laughs> we still haven't got to the bottom of it. <laughs> it just didn't seem to need him. We don't know why it happened. We don't know how it happened. <laughs> Great. Super goal for Wolves. It's three in the FA Cup the fifth round is just round the corner Miller getting the right side of the Leicester defender going round Ian Walker cool this cup calm run, is composed this, oh is this cup is this cup run the uh, like the turning point of the season in a way like psychologically yeah I think definitely that Newcastle game you, you can just see with the results they just lifted after that I've I've just um just trying to look at Carlton Carl's um, loan spell. Um, first team opportunities at Chelsea were limited as they had Good Johnson, Hasselbank and Zola. Loan to Wolves um, for one <laughs> month in November 2002, later extended to two months. There it is. Couldn't get past either Good Johnson and... Uh, couldn't get past Kenny Miller either. Fever certainly had a firm grip of the club. As I say, the, the turning point for me was the, the was the Walsall away game, where we could easily have slipped up and, and gone, oh well, we did well last week against Premiership clubs, um, and then fallen away the week after. But they didn't. They stuck at it on, a, on an awful surface. Uh, and got it is an awful surface. You don't see pictures like that at top level anymore. Yeah, look at that. It's a shock. <laughs> And look, they paid the price. That's the problem. We could do something in the cup, uh, and also the league form we picked up, and we had belief. That throw, Tessa Sanderson levels. That is. 
like genuinely, Matt Murray will tell you he couldn't kick it like ten yards, but he could throw it about sixty. A cotton cold load spell was cut short by Chelsea, who recalled him early because <laughs> he wasn't playing. <laughs> no, they needed him. He, he played a further twelve times in league and cup that season for the Blues. TC still going here, by the way, everybody. I oh, know this is big. It's hell of a monologue in here. Again, we've got all of this, but we didn't get any of those <laughs> eight goals. <laughs> none of, none of the penalty <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. That <laughs> Thoughts on all gold, by the way. Gold shorts. So, it always makes me think of Newcastle away, the New Year's Day game. Were we in all gold that day? Yeah, I think, I think so. So, I think I think that, that's what it immediately makes me think of. Happy memories of the, of the Newcastle away. But... Uh, is there a reason we've gone for it to like? Is it because you kind of black shorts with other black shorts? That can't be the yeah, case, I think, can it? I think that's. I, th I think that's the one, isn't it? We, we, we always, always wear it Derby as well. That's my memory of it, Derby away. By the way, um, Adam Proudlock had just been on loan at Sheffield Wednesday. Commentator said there, he scored two goals in five games, and then that's where he actually that's where he went to Sheffield Wednesday in two thousand and three. What a story. Nine goals in 50 games for him. For the next, 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 Steve Ball. <laughs> oh, goalkeeping, awful. Poor. Was Kenny Miller our top goal scorer this season? Yeah. I think he was. I think he got 20 odd. Uh, 24. Have you guys? Rem you haven't remembered that, have you? You got? Have you got stats in front of you? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just otherwise, I'm really, I'm really letting right. the side down. <laughs> There's a compartment in my head that just remembers these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really impressive. It's still Dean Sturridge, but the uh, move. It's petered out perhaps. It hasn't. It's in the net. It's four. It took it in Had no right to score there, did I? <laughs> oh, big deflection. <laughs> Just get in there, Adam Proudlock. Which bamboozled Kevin Pressman. It's Wednesday nil. Wolves four. Another four goal demolition and one to savour for the returning Adam Proudlock. But the old Brighton curse. The with Dean Stadium. The, the old region. Brighton curse. <laughs> <laughs> Still there, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very true. Look at that running track. Oh, yeah, look. And we were complaining about the distance from the pitch at the Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't even see I mean, the fans. Bloody <laughs> hell, look at that. <laughs> The with Dean, like, I'm sure there was a pub, like, it kind of built into it. Because it was a leisure centre thing, wasn't it? An athletics track. Yeah. I'm sure there was, yeah. like, a, a harvester-type pub in it. Hang on. Are we not seeing Brian's goals here? Have they been erased from history? <laughs> like the 4 4 years <laughs> Look, after that. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Brighton didn't send the footage. <laughs> I remember this. This was on... Um, this was on BBC TV on a Sunday, I think. I remember the Gary Lineker, Gary Lineker in the studio was built right next to the right of me of the family enclosure. And they had um, Paul Simpson as manager because he'd just left us a couple of years earlier. That's a definite, that's VAR. VAR. All day. VAR, that's pen. Advertising hoarding for MG Rover. It's in the back of the net. Bulls have the lead. Hard look on the young Roxel Golfing for Jilts. Beaten possibly by a deflection on the way through. Evans into 
Platt from the Walsall striker Clive Platt. Evans again with a crunching challenge. Here's Paul Simpson. Oh, there's Paul Simpson. There he is. There he is. Range, which looks as though he's taken a deflection in front of Murray. The third division side have made it 1 1. Cameron gets it in. It's away it. from Evans. Naylor. Shot is saved by Jilks. A hint of offside as Miller turns it. Hint of offside. <laughs> I think it. Oh no, he wasn't. It was less got, I think, in the middle. Striker's instinct. <laughs> Goalkeeping this season has been awful, though. Mm. The ball, the ball's coming forward in the closing stages of the game. Here's Cameron. Yes! Yes, Brownie! <laughs> <laughs> Tell you man, this was peak time when my mate was like, un unbelievable, look at him, he's come back from loan. This is it, yeah. He's scoring <laughs> goals, this is his time, it's lift-off. They've started singing Adam Proudlock's a tatter. <laughs> Everyone's got Proudlock on the back of their shirts. I remember him. <laughs> Apart from Tim, just, just nine. <laughs> just, just nine. nine. <laughs> just nine, of course. This, um, I went to see Def Leppard on, um, on this night, and... Um, at the Wolverhampton Civic Hall and they told us what the score was halfway through the encore that's great that's really good <laughs> <laughs> and also they were supported by um, a band that nobody had heard of at the time called The Darkness um, but I missed seeing The Darkness because I was trying to I was in the I was in the corridor at the Civic trying to chat up ladies while having a couple of beers <laughs> so I missed the first glimpse at The Darkness before they got massive that's really good <laughs> I saw the darkness at the Civic Hall when they when they were touring there themselves, and it was one of the best gigs I've ever been to. Oh man, good band, <laughs> good band. And he looks for Andar's head, finds it. Now Colin Cameron, Marshall's lost it. How many goals have they scored this year? I was going to say just from yeah. Colin Cameron striking it from range. <laughs> it, well, it feels like the vast majority of the goals we've scored in the last two months have been rebounded off the keeper and someone following up. That's kind of that's kind of been the most of the goals we've scored. Have you noticed as well, by the way, that after all the praise we gave to Alex Ray in the first part of this yeah, season he's review, stopped, isn't he? Yeah, he's done nothing since. <laughs> he's had a terrible yeah. second half of the season. It's really dropped off. Is this the Ipswich team that goes on to finish fifth or have they already no, done think, it and come I think, down? I think they've just been relegated. I was watching Premier League years the other day, which is happening quite a lot at the moment, and um, <laughs> Ipswich were relegated the year before. Kenny Miller, 2 2. <laughs> Fantastic flowing move from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Because they were always ones at this period that were always up there in and around it. Up or down, up or down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Lee, Lee Naylor about to do something mad? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> That's so sweet. Special, special goal. The block switch bomber. Look at that. Cleared by Wilness and full on the volley. Lee Naylor let fly. One of the goals at Portman Road this season from Wolves. Lee Naylor. So young. Ten years old, Lee Naylor. <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> George again never in doubt never in never doubt. in doubt <laughs> he's from the offside trap and sends the traveling wolves fans into delirium the through ball picked out and does run no flag against the wolf striker what season was it oh i remember i think watching lee naylor score there i still remember <laughs> what going to wolves at uh it was like the boxing day game and it, and it came out about 30 yards out and the ball came to Naylor. And, and as he was winding up to shoot, I was I went, not from there. It flew into the back of the net. You know, do that, like. I, remember, I remember doing that with Saïs on, um, on Boxing Day as well, actually, at Millwall. Yeah. Remember that one? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not from <laughs> this. I, I, I said it out loud. So I said it at 25 yards. I said, oh, no. <laughs> in the corner. See, right, love it. This, is, this is Preston, right? Yeah. Oh, this, this is an amazing goal, this is. Yeah, this is unbelievable. We were there for this one because I went to uni in Preston. Oh, great. Okay. And... Um, Look at that! That's a world phenomenal. Absolutely, I mean, oh, what a player! A world day. Honestly, he's unreal. Right, we had a load of mates up, and we took him to a curry house afterwards. And like, they're the broadest black country you can imagine, and they're in this curry house, and they're got, and they're ordering. And I remember one of them just goes. Yeah, and uh, four big crisps, please, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and this Preston Curry House owner's like, what? Yeah, you know, them big crispy things. <laughs> Poppadoms. Yeah, that's them. <laughs> big crisps. Four of them, big please, crisps. pals. <laughs> this um, this second goal coming up in a minute is brilliant as well. I've got a feeling Dennis Irwin does something a bit special. Maybe not yet. I, I was at this game as well, Mikey. We could have started our... Beautiful relationship a few years earlier. Were you in a Def Leppard or a Darkness t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Headband on. Yeah, it's Dennis Owen on the overlap here. This is, oh, this is going to be good. Oh, no, it's the, He's look gone. The, oh, look at that. Beautiful. 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 Proudlock with the cross, well worked. Tim, I hope the following season you just had number 12 on the back instead. <laughs> <laughs> no name <From> required. <laughs> <laughs> Iconic number, that. But Watford's defence will prove harder to bypass on a frustrating evening. Helped on by Nielsen. Eventually Ince. Brings it down. Alex Ray. Helped on by Undar to Cameron. Chamber Cameron with his oh. shot saved. Wow. Nice rebound. <laughs> and Watford just been in the Premier The Watford's 99, wasn't it? In the Premier League. Yeah, with Graham Taylor. I mean, I know that, like... Wolves and Watford fans don't really get on anymore. But there is always still a nice moment when, like, Graham Taylor's referenced for the two of them. Yes. But yeah, that, uh, the FA Cup semi final last season was. I, uh, I took my nephews to Wembley. And they're. They're six and four. So <laughs> they're right. They're right at that age of just, like, falling in love with football. And uh, it's their first ever trip to Wembley. How is that not a penalty, by the way? Sorry. Well, VAR. VAR all day, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. Go on. And it's just like, it was, you know, like the, you know the moment when football first breaks your heart and you realise that there's a lot of pain involved in it as well. It was like, what, having to watch the, like having to watch the, uh, you know, uh, as lose to Watford in that game was painful enough, but through the eyes of a six-year-old, it was absolutely brutal. Oh, he is horrible. That, like, I, had, I had to kind of give him the talk of like, this is what football is about, you know. Well, it's the fact that like you got, there are fans around who are what early teens who kind of only really know like pretty good times at the minute yeah 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 like they were yeah, probably to too young for the double relegation so they've only kind of known battering everyone in league one and then the last few years oh, I can't stand those people they've got some nerve <laughs> <laughs> that's staying in <laughs> They've got a lot to learn, basically. That, you know, <laughs> it's going to be even harder for them. That's what you have to think, because when the bad times arrive, they're gonna they're gonna be so alien to those times. It's gonna be like, you know. Yeah, that's true. They'll, they'll, they'll have it worse than we did. That's a typical yeah. Wolves fan comment that I've played. <laughs> I'm just going, yeah, the bad times, they will arrive. Don't you worry. <laughs> 
greatest times in our lives, but don't worry, it'll be terrible again soon. Oh yeah, it'll be it'll be terrible again soon. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> it was, it was good to feel, as I say, people are now beginning to display their their talents and their abilities on a more consistent basis, and that was the feel that was saying, okay, we've got to keep working at this. And from our side, Wonder right, I'm going to say it. John Ward brought out his clothing range. <laughs> Which I think was actually called forward, as in forward. <laughs> How long have you been thinking that up? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Newton nearly nipping in. He's received it back. I think I missed this game because. Um, tickets for the Southampton FA Cup game had gone on sale that morning and I queued overnight outside the steeple, slept outside with a few there thousand others. There we go! And um, um, I was too tired for this game, I just went home at like two o'clock. <laughs> so you had to miss the game? Yeah, I just went home. Um, I was talking to someone about that the other day and they didn't believe that that's what used to happen but they used to open up the Steve Ball stand and you could you could queue through it overnight. Yeah, I think I think the first ones that got there were allowed to sleep in the stand. And then the rest That's of us right. were just on the concourse outside. I remember, yeah. I remember leave, leaving school and heading straight to Molyneux and then queuing. People would pop off to Asda and go and get food and stuff. But That's otherwise, right, yeah, yeah. You, were there, you were there to sleep and then they went on sale at like 8 in the morning or something, I think. You were still and at school were... at 17? Yeah, is it, yeah, is it six form? No, six form. I remember that race. I was, I was just wondering really, why I got chucked out of school at sixteen. <laughs> they were really weird nights, weren't they? Like just like a weird sleepover in the stand. I can remember like um, being able to go and oh, we did it for the Spurs game, and um, I can remember sitting in my season ticket seat in the stand Cullis at like two o'clock in the morning, just looking at an empty Molyneux. <laughs> It's like really surreal. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Again, again, these these kids don't know how good they've got it. They just yeah. they just log on and press a button. That's right. I can still remember I got there with uh, when we when we queued up for the I think it was the Tottenham game. We were about 16 and we got, my dad dropped us off at the Molyneux like seven o'clock on Friday night and we got in the queue in the Stan Kulistan. My mate Shaps arrived and he went, right, we're going uptown, aren't we? Great shot. He said, we're going uptown, aren't we? I said, no, no, we're queuing for the tickets. And he went, I thought we were just telling that our parents so we could go out. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we were going Dorchester. I was like, no, mate. <laughs> I want to go to the Tottenham game. Was he all he was, dressed up in his best he gear? Was gutted. Yeah, I thought that when he arrived. I was like, Shaps has got a shirt on. It's going to be freezing. <laughs> When, so when we signed Paul Ince, was him being captain part of the deal, do you think? I think, um, I think Butler was still club captain and then Ince was team captain, I think. Yeah, but, then, oh, right, Butler okay. stayed as captain, okay. but it was only because Butler got dropped, I think, that um, yeah. Ince then took then, the armband. And then I think kind so, of Butler just said, you may as well keep the armband. When, when they lift a trophy at the end of this season, spoiler alert, uh, that they lift it together. Ah, okay. It's basically Paul Ince uh, tipexed on the captain's armband, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely reference there for anyone who's watched at part one. I like to think Paul Ince only writes in tipex. <laughs> it's like when he signed his contract, it's like there's the tipex ball. <laughs> That's to print it on coloured paper because otherwise he wouldn't see it. <laughs> God, we're in March already. But a late goal ensured the points would this time be shared. They seem to have won like every game for quite a long time now. It was a good run, apart from that goal of straw with Watford. And it also feels like that because they didn't show any of those Brighton goals. 
<laughs> well, that, that, that one nil win at Brighton. Nice turn by Kennedy. There's plenty of space if he can pick up the pass, which he does to play. Powerful shot, which is just wide of the Ipswich goal. Who went up automatically this season? Um, was it, I think, Portsmouth, wasn't it? I think. It's a great finish by Ince there. Uh, Portsmouth and Leicester. Oh, there you go. They were a long way away as well. Portsmouth got like 98 points this se that season. Oh. All done from memory as well, Mikey. It's, yep. uh, it's impressive. <laughs> He's got a part of his brain where he keeps that stuff. <laughs> After going to like a zen-like state. <laughs> what, Google? <laughs> <laughs> a late equaliser at Molyneux. Richard Naylor, the goal scorer. As attentions once again turn to the FA Cup, Wolves paid their... Oh, this was a bad day. Bad day. Oh, Didn't turn up at all this day. day for Wolves, former Southampton manager Dave Jones. This is a good Southampton team at this point as well, though, by the way. Yeah. I oh, that's Chris Marsden, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Marsden. It's in. It's treated. Chris Marsden. I think like we barely had a shot this day. I think the body's in front of Murray. Made the ball go in the net. So just a thing of like footballers during this period. Because Chris Marsden looked exactly the same for like 20 years. What you basically tell you mean is bald players, isn't it? <laughs> when you say that, really your point is bald, bald players. <laughs> Yeah, but all of them. Like, I know I get. I sound like I'm obsessed with how these people haven't aged, but I feel like I've aged more watching this than some of these players have in the last 20 years. <laughs> it's a wound again out in the quarterfinals, isn't it? It's such like an anticlimax. I, I think once you get to the semis, to have got to the semis feels like a proper thing, but... A, a cup run ending at the quarterfinals is an absolute wounder. Yeah, it's like all that effort, and from a fan's yeah. point of view, all that money that you spent, and the night that Tim spent in the stand. Yeah, yeah. and then because if, if you get to the semis, it's like a proper occasion, isn't it? Neutral. Venue. Yeah, yeah, great day out. Oh, that's a save, man. Oh, good save by Murray. Another test passed. The team showed no evidence of any cup hangover. After outplaying leaders Portsmouth earlier in the season, the Wolves had no reason to fear a trip to Fratton Park. <laughs> oh, Dave Instein. They had no reason to fear a trip to the team, to the runaway league leaders who'd spent loads of money. <laughs> Can't help but think he set us up for a fall here, boys. Anybody? Anybody going to tackle? No, you're right. Oh, it's gone in. Off the top of Murray. Never ages, does he, Steve Stone? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what it is about him. They battle to avoid the drop. <laughs> and it's Dennis Irwin at this point in his mid-50s. <laughs> Up on towards Kennedy. <sighs> off the line. May fall. Proudlock couldn't get his shot in. And then Les got... Acrobatically tries to keep it in play, still in and around the stoke box. Eventually, it's uh, cleared up to the halfway line. Naylor is under it. Oh, Naylor, weaker foot. This is uh, unaccustomed right foot to get it forward. Still plenty of options. This is uh, Colin Cameron. Oh, Colin, Colin Cameron just loves shooting. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows it's always going to rebound off the keeper and someone can finish it. <laughs> Clappers, not seen those for a long time. Would they even be allowed in now? Yeah, they have them at, is it um, at Fulham? Don't they have them at Fulham? No, they're like paper things. Yeah, okay. What is it with players getting their tops off at this point? Well, you don't get booked, do you? So, <laughs> you, you don't get booked at this stage, do you? When did that come in? Yeah, you I can take your top off and later. not be booked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never, never understood why you'd why you'd want to do that though. It's because you've never had a body like that. To be fair, <laughs> 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 unless I've never scored a goal in my life. 
That is lovely skill. I mean, trust me, if I if I'd worked out like that and had a body like that, I would not. I wouldn't be wearing tops any time. <laughs> are, you, are you wearing a top now? Well, I am, yeah, because I haven't got a body like that. <laughs> Why are you naked when we're watching this? Maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I just. Can I just say for the record that I'm not. <laughs> just a little bit of sick came in the mouth then. By the time we get to Cardiff, though, boys, we're all naked, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the deal, right? <laughs> I tell you what, if if Alex Ray scores in the semi finals of the playoffs, <laughs> pants are coming off. <laughs> uh, I've got a I've got a number nine in a tattooed onto my back, which you can nice. see if I say what's Nice. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> gone but not forgotten. <laughs> I hope he hasn't gone. Otherwise who's, who keeps texting me these things? <laughs> <laughs> it's off. That's a great goal. I saw Bully the other week, actually, right? He was hosting some kind of dinner party at Molyneux for the Olympiacos game. Tomo oh, was yeah. Tomo was doing double work, so Tomo was late to start our commentary of the game because he was upstairs enjoying himself. And we went up at half time, and Don Goodman was, shall we say, had been clearly enjoying himself. <laughs> and he he just kept singing Rag and Bone Man songs at me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Kennedy got to spend some time with him when he came back and worked for the club again during the under 23s this season. Such a lovely bloke. Yeah, I'm really, really glad to see him um, get a great job, league, league job at Macclesfield, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. It's just like you know when people say like you shouldn't really meet those people that you kind of idolised when you're younger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I always thought that about Bully. What a guy! What a guy! Absolutely. Have you ever I told to Bully? Um, What's that? I used to, when, when I first um, needed Bully's number in my phone, I had him down as God. <laughs> um, but then I just thought, what if I'm what if I'm with him and for some reason I need to change his number on my phone or something and have to bring that up? So I just changed it to Bully. Why would you have needed to change his number? I don't number? know. I just thought that would be the most embarrassing thing that, that could happen if, if Bully's... Bully somehow knew, which I'm now I'm now saying in a very public forum. Yeah, oh yeah, on my phone. <laughs> Sorry, Bully ain't gonna watch this. <laughs> true, true. Just just the next Bully, Adam Proudlock. <laughs> is Proudlock in your phone as next God? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just down as Jesus. <laughs> We played some big games and come through those games, and we felt that we were hitting the form and hitting, you know, the, the right. I reckon without these interviews, you could do a season review in 50 minutes, solid. No, oh, Rotherham again. <laughs> uh. So, like, if you think about it. We played Rotherham in the League Cup and there were eight goals and it went to a penalty shootout. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then nothing in both league games. And we have detailed highlights of both of them. It's left for Irwin. Off the top of the two-man wall. Oh, good save. And a flick which is from Newton. Asking Pollock to work once more. Over the bar. Oh, Butler fancy some. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a good save. If anyone um, hasn't watched the old Gold Club with Paul Butler or listened to the full extended podcast, there's a great story of from the season in the Premiership when he has to accept a fine from the FA. And that looked a dive. Um, and... <laughs> um, Basically, Dave Jones tells him that he um, he needs him to accept the fine because he, he can't have him suspended. 
<laughs> and supposedly, Jez tells it. Jez Moxie tells him that the club will pay the fine, and then they were like, "No, no, we'll just take it out of your wages, Paul, for the next month." Test awaited at Grimsby, who were desperate to sustain their first division status, <laughs> but there would be no room for sympathy from the Molyneux men. <laughs> Danny Coins kicked towards. Oh, Campbell. home commentary again. Love it. John McDermott searching for Mansaram's run. Home video, by the looks of things, as well. Back down towards Young Mansaram. <laughs> Filmed on one of those really early camcorders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those long, lanky legs not quite getting the better of the defence. Good ball, great ball. Here we go again. Oh. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I'm going to do that if we ever get to commentate on a game again. Here we go again. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> Even before he'd hit it. <laughs> no instability to it. <laughs> oh, Friday night fixture. Great stuff. Oh, the city ground as well. What a game. Yes, please. Yes, please. On Sky. Oh, and Blake is onside. He's got the right side of Dawson. We're not upgraded to Sky Sports 1 for this. We're not on Extra Live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's no red button in the corner for this one. Sir <laughs> <laughs> so Jack or Jonathan Awood, who was in control of the controller, has pressed back up by this point. <laughs> the have the lead very early on, just 10 minutes gone at the city ground. An important goal as well. Blake doing well to get there before Reed. This is Cameron. Oh, that's such oh, a good goal. Really, isn't it? Wolves find themselves 2-0 to the good at the city ground. Took it early. It was a, a long ball. Blake did very well. Is that Paul Ince with the acrobatic ball through? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And then look at that. Look at that touch. Oh. Colin Cameron could have taken it on a couple of yards, but realised he would have been inside the box and therefore couldn't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Challenges still coming forward. Reed into Johnson, who's onside. There's a goal back for Nottingham Forest. David Johnson, their leading scorer, gets it. And a lifeline. Schimmicker over it. There's uh, plenty of movement for him to aim for. Ooh. Murray's lost it. It's in. It's given. It's Dawson. Dawson will claim it. It's 2-2 two -two after Wolves were. 2-0 But the Wolves had to be satisfied with just a point. As Millwall visited Molyneux next, it was to be an unhappy return for ex-Wanderers manager Mark McGee. Oh, Mark McGee in charge of Millwall. Miller. Cameron wants it. All alone, Colin Cameron. Go down. Oh. Yes. Shut off again. Shut off. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that Portsmouth defeat is the only is the only defeat we've seen in this part so far because obviously Brighton was a was an away win. What an incredible run! Considering that Dave Jones is on the verge of getting sacked, and yet we still we get into the playoffs. We're we're sixth or fifth, aren't we? When we get through, yeah, still com like comfortably behind the bottom two, the top two. Sorry, fifth, yeah. 16 points off the second place at the end of the season. Off the top of your head. Oh, that is a lovely goal. That's a really lovely goal. That first touch. So um, you can definitely tell why Alex Ray isn't in the team anymore. Yeah, he's kind of taken on, taken it on, isn't he? Because I always, I always kind of in my mind remember it as Ince and Ray, but realistically, it's oh, that's brilliant. I think I don't think we've Great mentioned Sean Newton's name yet, but that is a phenomenal. Goal. Yeah. It's because I think we're all nervous about talking about what happened after he stopped playing for Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgot about that. Too, you just said, look at him, um, kids. He was, uh, he was very kind of consistent. You knew what you were going to get from him. A good, good, uh, good championship player. With playoff qualification high on the agenda for both teams. 
good championship play. That's damning with faint praise, isn't it? <laughs> it depends on <laughs> who you are, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're a good championship player, you'll take it, probably. Yeah. If, you call Larkin, if you're Colin Larkin, you're absolutely loving that. <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's like I think I genuinely think that the championship or division one whatever it was called and whatever you I guess you call it from where you when you grew up was like better during this period whether that's just because it was harder to get it felt like it was harder to get promoted but it just felt like there were more good teams and good players like the top teams weren't just snapping up all the good youngsters anymore and you had like experienced pros like Ince and Irwin and loads of teams had good players around. I think you, you tended to get a lot more um, to, to drop down from the Premier League, I think. Whereas yeah, whereas now, the, a, lot, a lot of the foreign, foreign players now, when they come towards the end of their career in the Premier League, they won't, won't drop down to Championship. Yeah, well, you've got China, you've got America, you know, it's like... Yeah, exactly, yeah. More, much more likely to do that, whereas, whereas yeah. you had like... I think T- Teddy Sheringham dropped down, didn't he, with Portsmouth? And we saw Paul Merson earlier, and Wolves had a whole host of really good players at the end of their career. Yeah. It just felt like most teams did. Yeah. Lovely. And like nowadays, someone like Jolian or Lee Naylor, after like one season, would have been signed by a Premier League team. Uh, yeah, and not necessarily be making the first team, but be there. Yeah. Basically, what we're saying is football used to be better than it is nowadays. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> I, I genuinely, I think it peaked in the late 90s. There you go. From like a general footballing sense. <laughs> yeah. Pesky Solido. He took some stick over the years, didn't he? Oh, he did, didn't he? <laughs> more, more than any player, I think. I can I think remember. I can repeat exactly what... What the what the South Park used to sing, but oh, um, God. it was it referenced his yeah. Well, no, actually, no, I'm, I don't even know how to reference that to be honest. He took a lot of stick, put it that way. He took a lot of stick. Yes, George, love that. That wasn't a pass at all. But George was like, "Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm faster than you. I'm having it." Yes. <laughs> Does that Next. count as an assist? If you knocked if you it for yourself and George and Dart just ran past you and went, I'll have it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> have some of that. Oh, that feels harsh to me. Uh, that's a, that is a shoulder barge all day. Nothing wrong with it. love these kind of end-of-season end games where I presumably neither team had anything to play for at this point because they're both in the playoffs. And they just have a bit of a free-for-all. Yeah, that's true, actually. It feels like just the gloves are off and it's like, oh, let's just have a bit of a ding-dong and it's fine. <laughs> well, I guess Sheffield United were trying to make sure they were third, I think. It's like that kind of thing of if you're going to make sure you get... I don't know, was it ever easier against Sixth? Sixth is always the team that kind of tends to make the late run. Yeah, I think the team in third never has a great record of going up, do they? Because they're normally the most sort of deflated... Although that's generally because they're like the team that's just missed out, whereas yeah. Sheffield United were miles off. Oh, goal. Three points by the late strike. But it wouldn't be the last time these two teams would meet this spring. For the third month this season, the wars had remained... Pretty, a pretty good run to get in so comfortably from where they were yeah. like Christmas time. Amazing, yeah, absolutely. Really. We felt we were getting stronger uh, physically and mentally as well, which was important. Um, and over the season, we've had uh, injuries to strikers and midfield players and defenders, and through no fault of their own, they've had the rest and they had a break from the game. <laughs> Dave Jones is trying to claim that injuries was a good thing. Oh, here we go again. Uh, the previous season, because basically, come the end, <laughs> we run on empty tanks. Now we seem to be running on, uh, so, some tactical uh, tactical injuries that was the key to our season stay focused and that's one of the players said to me the other day we're in a zone at the moment and, uh, we don't want to come they must zone. have done something already promoted Leicester visit Molyneux for the final league game of the season with both teams eager to bow out on a high long kick from the former England goalkeeper Polly's head big Ludo at the back there yeah 
towards Kenny Miller. Goes past Taggart with ease. He's got uh, players in support, but Miller. <laughs> oh, that's not an interesting. Absolutely really phenomenal. Good goal. Go, go, must be a great goal of the season competition for this season. We've seen some screamers. There must have been a part in his head though when he hit that. I was thinking that's too close to the post. And towards Tommy Wright. <laughs> Up against Polly. Oh, Ludo. Oh, Ludo. And he, he did use his hands. He did. Polly. He did. <laughs> For the use of the hands. Right at the death, it's a penalty to Leicester. Yeah, because Lescott got injured, didn't he? He, t he tells this story on the podcast on Old Gold Club that he, um, he got injured ahead of this game, I think. And they, so they kind of kept him out to make sure that he was all right for the playoffs. Yeah, okay. That's probably Polly's last game of balls, isn't it? We've the year before. We've uh, started off strong last year, two years ago. Why are we only now hearing from Paul Butler? <laughs> Why have they held him back till that late in the season? That's, that's the only interview that they had from the season that they kept. <laughs> Someone had video <laughs> recorded over the VHS <laughs> from Sky Sports Extra Live. <laughs> the only thing we've got is him talking about the Leicester game, <laughs> last game of the season. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> all the all the interviews from the season got wiped in favour of the nil nil because it was on Sky. <laughs> That's why we got so much of it. If you can play well over that period of time, hopefully you get three games out of it, and we can play well. Then I think you get. We've got sweatshirts. We've got t-shirts. <laughs> we've got cargo pants. <laughs> Forward clothing. <laughs> I'm trying to make the players wear them under their tops because they keep taking the shirts off to celebrate. And um, that's what we're all striving for. Only three matches now. <laughs> what an interview that was. Um, this is it. This is it's it. so this rare. Like playoffs, just are a byword for misery until this. See, like, just they could are, not they stand are ma magical occasions though. Like some of the atmospheres oh. at Molineux over the years. I remember Palace in '96 the, and yeah. and this as well. Like the noise is just incredible. Did you, did you, um, the Bolton one, did you go to Bolton or did you watch it? At the, I watched it at the Molyneux on the screen. Yeah, I was at the know, Molyneux as well on those, on those yeah, heavily beam pixelated Beanbacks used to be uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really weird, really, <laughs> really weird feeling. It's just kind of that, that pure kind of feral kind of atmosphere at playoff games because you've, you've, you've had nine months of the season leading up to this. And it's on this, yeah. Death or glory. Oh, I get, and that I think that's what, and I'm jumping forward slightly, but that was so weird about the Cardiff, uh, the day out of Cardiff was like it, it just went so well for us. <laughs> like all that, all that feeling of like, oh yeah. god, death of glory, are we going to do it? It was like it, it felt like at half time, everyone was just looking at each other, going, oh my god, <laughs> like we, we, yeah, we're doing it. We, we like, just never, ever, ever. <laughs> ever ever did things the easy way around this time just never yeah that's it that's it it, it was such a strange feeling that day there's the cross it evades everyone apart from Miller save on Hanneman I think there was, there was a confidence we'd win this game Reading hadn't been a decent team Traditionally, had they? I think. Um, oh, I think Al Alan Pardew would, was it. Alan Pardew was manager. Pretty sure it was. Sort of making his name. Think so. Himself. Yeah. Scourge of yeah. At the moment. I don't know why you said you were feeling confident at the time. I'm not even confident now watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> Harper, looking to go by himself. Path less got good challenge. Oh, that's a great challenge. Time to Look at that! Brilliant. Yeah. Newton. Supported by Kenny Miller, pulling out to the right. Now Denny Sirwin. Again, Wolves chucking bodies forward as the cross comes in. Again, it's in and around the box. Oh. 
Ooh. I mean, how is that not a penalty? There you go. And Wolves have equalised 15 minutes from time in the playoff semi final first leg. Top off. <laughs> it's, a great, I mean, it's a great season for tops off. That was like pure relief at that point. I think Reading's, Reading's goal was quite early, and this was getting towards the last stages of the game. I remember being very kind of frantic. It was pure relief when this went in. Yeah. At least give you something to go into the second leg with. It's 1 1 in the playoffs. So I think reading up on it the other day, and it being like five playoff semi final defeats in a row. Um, we'd lost in 94, 95 to Bolton, 97 to Palace. Palace. And then yeah, 2002 Bolton, Palace. to Norwich. Norwich. And I think they'd lost a playoff back in the day in like Division 3 or 4. Yeah, there was one the, um, the year before the 87, I think. I think it was the first ever year of the playoffs, but it wasn't, it wasn't the same as like the ones that followed. But. Um, yeah, the, there was a real like hoodoo around the playoffs. <coughs> oh, Sorry, how's oh. that? <coughs> oh. Tom's so shocked that Paul Butler's missed a five-yard volley. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. Blake does well. He keeps coughing. We're all going to have to self-isolate. <laughs> <laughs> Miller has come short. It's come across to Ince, who has the time and space. Fouled at the last moment by. Inti again, driving run into the box, look for the first goal. The usual suspects are over it. Naylor, Irwin is in there as well. Naylor. Oh yes. It's there. It's <laughs> yes, yes, yes. To go into the second leg with. Under the wall. Look at that. Oh, look. Not the best free kick that Lee, Lee Naylor has ever struck, but it's found its way through to the back of the net. Not the best free kick he's ever struck. How dare you? It's outrageous. Yeah. They had left it late. Just picked the bottom corner out. Just 90 minutes away from a Cardiff. Oh my god. This night. Incredible. I think there's about there's about 6000 of us in the way and amazing. Matt Murray was absolutely immense this night. Camera. Turn by Miller. Through to Blake. I mean, like, obviously, kind of in the year since, he's become a really good pal of mine. But, like, I genuinely, genuinely think if he hadn't have got his injuries, oh, man, yeah. he would have been Absolutely. England's number one goalkeeper for a long time. One of the time. great kind of tr Wolves tragedies of the last 20 years, really, that he never fulfilled his potential. Well, I, I'd say I think English football tragedies, Tom. Challenge there by Harper. Like, if he'd not... Because... Uh, you know, like the 2010 World Cup where we didn't have a goalkeeper for England? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a really good point. Because how, how old is Matt Murray this, in this season now? Uh, early, what, early 20, 23, maybe? Yeah, no, he's 23. Than that. He's, yeah, he's got his whole career ahead of him. Oh, is this, is this the moment coming up? I think it is. Yeah, I don't mind telling you, lads. The first time I've ever cried at a football match through pure happiness was after this goal. <laughs> That's great. I was on I was on the back row of that stand in tears of joy. Oh, Such yes. a good goal as well. It's a great goal for a guy who hadn't really done much for a couple of months. <laughs> that <celebra> <laughs> That's the most iconic, terrible celebration you've ever seen. Just that yeah. little skip and a leap. Oh, look at those scenes. It for himself, Alex Ray. Look at this, he's just gets his ball from Cameron here. There he is. Turns it was just because I think this was quite right on. I think it was about 10, 10 minutes to go, roughly. And you just knew, like with the away goals rule and everything, that, that this was it. And after all the tension and every, everything, going back 12 years as well, like the first time we yeah, ever yeah, yeah. got this close to promotion, it was just a massive outpouring of euphoria. There we go. And Wolves make it to the playoff final. They may now be as little as 90 minutes away. Oh, immense. What performance. Yeah. Ray, the substitute 
sent on by Dave Jones. Suddenly got the break. I say for a guy who'd like, I mean, he talks about it himself that he hadn't really been involved that much towards the end of that season. So to to do that at that moment. Yeah. Yeah, that way well, he didn't start in the final, did he? I think it, I, I don't even think he got. No, I don't think he played. Final. No, no, arguably the club's biggest game for decades. Oh, we've just um, done what we've normally done. We've worked hard in the training. We've gone through our set plays. Forty-eight games we worked for to get here. So everybody knows. Um, I like the way that Dave has now changed location. <laughs> done it for forty-eight games, and now we've just got to do it for this final one. Oh, that's in real time. That's in before the final. Oh. Black Army descended upon Cardiff. It would be a day to remember in the Welsh capital. What a day. <laughs> what a day. <laughs> oh. Where were you guys? Do you remember where you were? I was on the halfway line, roundabout, I think. I was watching I was, on telly. <laughs> I was pretty much right behind Mark Kennedy's goal. On the, really? Yeah, the side of the camera. Um, yeah, saw it fly straight to the corner. What a moment. I think I was pretty much under where the camera is now. In fact, I think I was in a... Because we were at uni, I think we were in, I want to say, the Adelphi pub in Preston. It was a thing... Do you remember Scream pubs? Are they still a thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a yeah, yellow cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get a Scream burger. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> God, we started well, didn't we? Because you know it's one of them where, like, I don't know, when you go away, and especially when you're away at uni and stuff, and you're going to watch these games that when they're on telly, and, like, when you're watching a team that nobody else really cares about. Yeah. yeah. So it's the real weird feeling. Yeah, like... I was living in... Uh, you're really into God. it, but there's just no atmosphere in the pub whatsoever. I was living in Tooting about... I don't know about nine, ten years ago, and it was uh, it was Wolves Blues, and I thought I'd go to the pub and watch it. And there's this wine bar up by Two in Tube Station. Gone. <laughs> Such a good goal. Incredible technique. Look at that. Does the Maradona to the camera? Like, yeah, I was going to say Maradona esque. Just how pumped he must have been. We were just, we just came, we, we were so good. We were so good. Just like, front like kick no, off. Like, nobody would have beaten us that day. That's what it yeah. felt like. like it was like, just. Like, n not many Premier League teams would have managed to, to get a glove on us that day. Look at that finish. Oh. It was just never in doubt. It was an amazing feeling. Oh. Do you remember how you got there, Tom? I think I was on um, one of those special trains they put on, like a, they called them Wolves trains, straight from Wolverhampton to Cardiff. Oh, I was on a coach because I remember it being like like your classic kind of away day coach home, where you kind of we just wanted to go ballistic, but then suddenly you're on the coach. <laughs> it's just like you have to do a <laughs> two and a half hour coach journey, and like you've run out of beers and you're on a coach. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went to uh, I went to this Tooting Wine Bar to watch Wolves Birmingham, and they had, they, had, they had Sky Sports on in the room under the bar. So I went down, and it was empty apart from one guy in a Birmingham shirt. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, was like, I had to just sit on the other side of the room. We just kind of went, all right. He went, all right, and then we watched the rest of the game in silence. <laughs> just like, just like one on either side of the room. Do you not start singing at each other? <laughs> Just like having it, no, we just like, just like ignored each other until the end of the game. It's just like <laughs> really weird. I remember, like, even though we went three 0 up at half time, a because people were so nervous as because of what happened in years previous, but also Sheffield United were such a good comeback team that year. I think they'd come back in the semi against Forest pretty late on, so we just never until the final stages really thought that 3-0 was going to be good enough oh. Oh. I just looked it up I think Matt Murray's 21 at this point amazing wow. amazing oh. when we were doing his testimonial year 
we Matty drove me and a guy called Alex who was doing the filming for Wolves at the time down to the Millennium Stadium and Matty basically paid the security guard a bit of money and they let us in Dream oh my god what a dream <laughs> and um, we basically put a microphone on Matty and we just followed him around and the roof was closed and it's like it was kind of like mood lighting oh wow and it's just Matty like walking through and going back into the dressing room and basically telling the whole story of this day and then we just kind of filmed him like looking around on the pitch and it's genuinely like it was proper emotional to watch him oh amazing because this is only like a, a couple of months after his career had ended so it's like back to the scene of his greatest moment at what should have been the start of an unbelievable yeah heartbreak never a penalty nicked in for Tung turn wide for a lock Asaba goes in for it Steve Bennett's seen an arm Steve Bennett, the original Mike Dean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's trying to take his arm. He's doing everything he can to take his arm out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this though. Look how much the goal is showing him. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Get in there, big man. Get in there. I love how he wipes everybody out on the follow-up as well. <laughs> to say that justice is done, you are also tempted to remark, not for the first time on the afternoon, as Sheffield United folk continue to go into mourning, that here is a Premiership goalkeeper in the making. Oh man, there it is. Oh, this is the moment. This is the, the emotional what a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Iconic that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Matty tells the story of looking down and seeing all the fans celebrating because obviously all the Sheffield United fans are behind him. And like that, and the Sir Jack coming on the big screen, he was like, he said, that's the moment he realised, yeah, this is it. Oh, wow. Wow. Now for the poor beaten blades who've given so much to this season. Koslook lifting it in. Let's get away. There it is. Torturous journey. Like, I, I'm not sure that feeling's been topped for Wolves fans since. I know, like, everything's been an incredible last two years, but that feeling, that summer, th after all those years of hurt, that was such, like, pure joy. Yeah. We and know. to win it in a win it in a cup final, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Best way to win it. That that uh, it, that euphoria you get from a cup final win, but with that much at stake and yeah, oh, and obviously like since we all know that it only lasted a season, but nobody knew that that was going to happen. You know, we all thought this was the start of something really special, and we'd waited so long for it, so so long. Some of us like our whole lifetimes. Yeah, this is the thing, absolutely. isn't it? Like, there are because there are loads of the players from the 2009 team that come on the podcast and talk about how they kind of they genuinely feel like they're not revered as much as yeah. as this team because yeah. and, and yet this team ended up going straight back that. down. I think you need to be a fan to understand it that just how special this was and how long we'd yeah. waited and how, how much hurt we'd all given for this moment. Can you just say, by the way, we had the exact same captain's band for our Sunday League team. <laughs> that was unexpected. Amazing. I remember um, Amazing. getting back to Wolverhampton like ASAP after this. You know, we're all on the train on the way back. And, um, great celebrations back in the city, as you can imagine. There he is. I've um, never seen before, by the way. Do you spot Dennis Irwin there? On mm. someone's shoulders, like right in the middle, a man who'd like won everything in his life. Amazing! Look at Amazing. that. Yeah, we went back out in Wolverhampton, and it was by the Royal London. You know that kind of square where you had the yeah. Royal London, the Varsity, the Hogshead. Yeah. And that was just full of fans. Everyone was outside. But then Lescott and um, Naylor turned up from nowhere. <laughs> no um, way. Yeah, yeah. Everybody just, as you can imagine, just engulfed them in the middle of the square right outside the Royal London 
Um, yeah, yeah, that was oh, great scenes. And then um, some um, <laughs> probably shouldn't say a name, but some a, a lady I was with um, had my Wolves Away top for that year, the white one, and got it signed by Jolene Lescott, and then kept it forever. So I never got it back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that, that story finished much sadder than I thought it was going to. <laughs> <laughs> it took a real turn. <laughs> uh, the night ended well. It was fine. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I remember the next morning walking down um, Compton Road and I was wearing my wolf's top and everybody who walked past would just be beeping. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which isn't a normal occurrence for me, before you say. <laughs> well, you were, you were bottomless, weren't you? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, your pants are off. <laughs> you were like Donald Duck, you were Winnie the Pooh in it. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, it speaks for itself. And uh, you saw what it meant to all the fans and that afterwards. And oh, wow. Getting the club was just a great day. Look at that. There it is. This was unbelievable. I mean, I was lucky enough to be on the coaches for the last parade. Oh, well. And honestly, it, it's such a surreal feeling. It's uh, it, incredible. Incredible. I think, I think it was just a free-for-all at Molyneux, wasn't it? They literally just opened Molyneux's doors yeah. and everyone just yeah. crammed in. Yeah, didn't you go? Yeah, that's it. So obviously we had the park last time because they were having to do renovations. So mm. out of years of darkness cometh light and Premiership football will be gracing Molyneux in 2003-2004. We'll see you I loved that. It was all worth it for the 33 points we had got in the Premier League next season to finish last. I was, <laughs> was going to say, should we not bother doing not, the next season? I don't want to talk, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> let's just stay in this moment, gents. Let's just keep this moment for now. <laughs> well, boys, I enjoyed that. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. What a pleasure, yeah. What a Lovely trip way to spend an afternoon. Hopefully at some point we will manage to digitise some possibly older seasons and we can go right back. I'm up for yeah, that. I look, f- look forward to it. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, well, cheers, gents. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was amazing. <laughs> 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 ah. Happy days, happy days. 